Okay, so before I continue, I, I feel like I should explain what these th two things are. Uh, the window uh, is just the window that you have, right? So let's say, for example, this uh, terminal, that's a window. Uh, the renderer, uh, I think the best way to think of it for now uh, is just think of the renderer as uh, the canvas onto which you're gonna paint uh, all of your uh, graphics and fancy textures. So when when you actually draw something, you're gonna draw it to the renderer and then the window is just there to uh, show it to the user. Uh, I think that's the best way to understand it. So let's just continue. Okay, so now that you have those two I, those two things declared, you are going to want to initialize STL. So you're going to do STL in it. And um, STL has a bunch of um, constants for how you can initialize SDL, right? So you can either initialize the video, you can initialize the audio, you can initialize any number of uh, modules that you want. Uh, for now, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna just initialize everything because we don't really care about uh, whatever, you know, nuanced things go on in the background or like this startup time or anything like that. We're just trying to show you how this thing works right now. So SDL init, SDL init everything. Um, yeah, that should that should be fine. Okay, now now that we have these two things up here uh, declared, we we are actually going to initialize them to some value, and we initialize them by running the create window and render function. Uh, so we're going to call SDL create window and render. And I'm going to create this uh, window to be 640 by 480. Uh, this may be a little small on your screen. So if it is, uh, definitely increase the resolution or just uh, set the render scale to be higher. Uh, then we are going to pass in uh, the window flags. We don't really need any window flags. So I'm just going to pass in zero. Uh, then you're going to pass the address of the pointers. So you're going to pass the address of the window pointer and you're going to pass the address of the render pointer. Okay. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we are actually going to set the draw color. Uh, we're going to set the draw color of what we what the color we're going to use to draw to this render and we are going to draw with the color black uh, for this argument you're going to pass in the render then we are going to supply the color values using the rgba format A is the alpha, so this is the transparency. Uh, this is the RGB. So we essentially set our draw color to be uh, black. If you want to think of this conceptually, think of uh, we, we took our brush and we uh, dipped it in some black ink. Okay, now we're gonna tell our program to actually draw, actually no, we're gonna clear the screen to some color, right? And the color we're gonna clear it to is gonna be the draw color that we just set. So we're gonna say SDL render clear. And we are going to pass in a render again. Uh, keep in mind, this is a C library, uh, so it doesn't have all of the luxuries of an object-oriented library. So uh, there, there, are some, uh, th there are some things like this that are kind of annoying uh, when it comes to uh, a non-object oriented language. So uh, definitely I don't like the way that the SDL makes you pass in render every single time you want to do some operation on it. But uh, it's C, it's supposed to be faster, so you know, it's up to them. Okay, so now that we have the SDL clear, uh, that ran, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna clear the screen to black. So uh, if I run this right now, you're gonna have a black screen. Uh, you won't really see anything because uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't actually show this to the user yet, so we just uh, clear the screen to black. But in memory, supposedly it's supposed to be black. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our draw color to be white. Uh, 
Same deal as before, pass in your renter, set your RGBA to be 255, 255, 255. Uh, this is setting the RGB to be white. Uh, so uh, color is gonna be set to white. Imagine, again, conceptually, imagine you paint, uh, you dipped your uh, paintbrush into some white uh, ink and now you're painting the white ink on the canvas. Okay, uh, now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, actually draw something to the screen and we are gonna draw a point. We're gonna draw a single pixel onto the screen and we do that by doing SDL, render, draw, point, render, and then we are going to draw it to the center of the screen. And I'm gonna draw it to the center of the screen by just taking our screen resolution and dividing by two. Okay, so we have those things all done. Um, <clears throat> just a quick uh, recap. We declared our two structs. These two structs are SDL window and SDL render. Uh, we initialized SDL, we created our window and render, so we, initiali we initialized the value of those uh, two structs. <coughs> we set the draw color to be black. We painted our screen to black using the SDL render clear function. Then we set our draw color to be white. Then we painted the screen to be, or we didn't paint the screen, but we painted a single pixel onto the screen at the center of this uh, canvas. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to present our render through our window. And we do that by doing SDL, render, present, render. And uh, here's the problem. If you run this program right now, or if you compile this program right now, it's just gonna open a window and it's gonna immediately close the window. To fix that, we are going to delay uh, this program by 10 seconds just to give it some more time to, uh, just give it more time to, you know, just show on the screen. So we're gonna do SDL, SDL, delay, and we're gonna delay for 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds if you didn't know. Okay, so now that our program is finished, we can actually compile it. Now to compile this program, we are just gonna run G++, use whatever compiler you want on your end, but I'm using G++ here. And then we are gonna pass in basic.cpp. We are going to compile it, or we're gonna link uh, the STL library. So we're gonna say L, STL2, and we are going to output as uh, basic. Okay, that compiled, let's run basic. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, YouTube is going to pick this up, but there is a pixel right here on the screen. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to go over some basic things you can do with rectangles. And I'll see you then. Okay, so from the last video, I've modified the code a little bit just to make it easier to see on YouTube. I looked over the last video. Uh, the pixel I drew to the screen wasn't that visible. So what I did in this video is... I've added this uh, render set scale. I made it so that uh, the render is gonna scale by 2x. And because of that, I also multiply the resolution by 2x. If on your computer, uh, the way that everything's going is fine, uh, you don't really need to add or like modify any of the code here. But uh, just so you know, between the last video and this one, uh, this line and this line are different. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's uh, let's do rectangles. Let's let's talk about STL rectangles. Okay, so uh, STL rectangle. How do you declare a STL rectangle? Well, you declare a STL rectangle like this, and uh, give it a name. I'm going to give my rectangle name called rect. And uh, what a rectangle is is basically a stru It's basically a structure that contains four values. It has a width, a height and a position. So the position is gonna be, well, not a position, but it has width, height, and uh, X position and Y position. Uh, 
So what you want to do is you want to set the width and the height of your rectangle. Then what you want to do is you want to set the position of your rectangle. And we set the width and height like this. So you basically just say rect.w, which uh, is just stands for width is equal to, let's say, 100. Then rect.h is equal to 100. And basically what I did here is I defined the width and the height of my rectangle. Now what we want to do is we want to set the position of our rectangle. And the position, if you know the Cartesian coordinate system, uh, x-axis, y-axis. So uh, we're going to say rect.y is equal to 0. And then rect dot x is equal to zero. So it's going to be at the, at the top of our screen. So it's going to be at, at the top. Um, it's going to be at the top left of our screen. Uh, in, in computer graphics, uh, the y axis it, it actually begins at the top, not at the bottom. So I just say no. OK, so now that we have our rect defined, what we want to do is we actually want to draw our rectangle to the screen. And we draw our rectangle like this. We are going to say STL, and then we are going to draw our rectangle like, like so. This function is called render draw rect. And to draw our rectangle, we need to specify which renderer we want to draw to. And we are going to specify the renderer we just defi we defined in this program. And then we are going to give it the address of this rectangle. OK. I should set the I should set the draw color up here to be white. OK, so what we're going to do is we are going to actually compile this and see what we get. OK, so now we have our rectangle, or is the outline of our rectangle here. And we still have our pixel here. OK, that's good. So what we can do now is we can draw another rectangle uh, it, the same size, but it's going to be maybe uh, to the right of this one. So we are going to, we are going to define a new rectangle. We are going to call this STL. Rect, and we're going to call this rect2, a very creative name, I know. I'm going to say rect2.width is equal to 100. Rect2.height is going to be 100. And then we are going to, we're going to move our rectangle uh, to the right and to the bottom of the original one. So we're going to say rect2.y is equal to uh, 50. And then we're going to say rect 2 x is equal to 50. Right, actually, I forgot to draw it. So uh, you still need to draw your rectangle down here. So we're going to say STL render draw rect render. And then we are going to draw a rectangle by passing rect2. Right. Let's compile this again. OK, so now we have our two rectangles. Uh, we have, well, I mean, th these are squares, but I'm just going to call them rectangles. So basically, we have these two rectangles. And as you'll notice, uh, they're overlapping each other. And one of the great things about SDL is that in SDL, you can do collision detection uh, in the library itself. So it's not, it doesn't only do Computer graphics also does collision detection for you, or at least very basic collision detection. So the way that you can do collision detection in SDL is by uh, getting the intersection of two rectangles. I, I believe you can also do the intersection of a line and a rectangle. Uh, I, believe, I believe there are several uh, geometric intersection uh, functions you can uh, use. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to do uh, how to test the intersection of two rectangles. And the way you do an intersection of two rectangles is like this. So 
we are going to do SDL rect. We're going to define a third rectangle, and this is going to be the intersection. We're going to define a rectangle called intersection, and we're not going to actually specify anything for this one. Then what we're going to do is we are going to run the function SDL, SDL, not intersection. Uh, it's uh, intersection. I think it's called intersect rect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the address of the two rectangles for which we want to test the intersection of. So we're going to pass in rect, and then we're going to pass in the address of rect2. Now, uh, this, uh, this function is going to return SDL true or SDL false based on whether or not there's an intersection. But since we already know there is an intersection, uh, we are just going to pass in uh, the third argument, which is going to be uh, our uh, which is going to be our intersection. We have to pass in the inter intersect. Oops. Uh, we're going to just put it. Okay, so we're going to pass in the third argument, which is going to be uh, intersection, which is our rectangle that we are going to store the intersect data in. So we're going to say intersection. And the, basically what this function is going to do is it's going to take the first two rectangles, it's going to test whether or not they're intersecting. Uh, then it's going to it's going to populate the third rectangle's data to be the intersection of the two rectangles. Uh, it, it's also going to return uh, SDL true or SDL false based on whether or not these two rectangles are intersecting. So to show you how this works, uh, we are going to do another draw function. Uh, actually, let's just uh, set the color to SDL, uh, set render draw, draw color, and I'm going to set it to uh, red. Okay, so we are going to draw the intersection here on this line. We are going to draw um, this rectangle, and I'm not going to draw the outline of this rectangle, rectangle but I'm going to draw uh, the filled in rectangle. So we're going to say STL render fill rect, and again, pass in your render. This is your canvas onto which you're painting, uh, and then we're going to pass in the address of our intersection. So we're going to say intersection. Uh, write this, and then we're going to compile this, and let's see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, this is our rectangle, this is our second rectangle, and this is the intersection point between the two. Okay, so that's a, a very basic overview of rectangles. Uh, I do recommend you check out the uh, wiki uh, for, this, uh, for this library. It's actually pretty interesting. Uh, it has a lot of stuff in it that a lot of people I've noticed don't really use uh, when they teach it. So definitely look it up. Uh, it has a lot of interesting things. And I'll see you in the next video. I think in the next video, I'll teach you more about drawing functions. And I'll see you then. Okay, so for this video, I thought I would just do something a little bit more interesting than just uh, drawing things one at a time. So uh, let's draw like 100 things at the same time. And to do that, we're going to use the vector library. Or should I, use, or should I say the vector container? But... Uh, whatever. Okay, so we are going to include the vector, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a vector of 100 points. Uh, a point in SDL is just uh, it's just um, a struct with an x and a y position. Uh, we're going to create SDL point, and we're going to call it v. And what we're going to do is we're going to do for int i is equal to 0, i is less than 100, i plus plus. And what we're going to do here is we are going to in place back a new, uh, a new random point. Uh, in place back essentially is just adding something to a vector. And we're going to do modulus 640. And then we're going to do rand modulus for 80. And that should be fine. Okay, 
so now that we have that, we can now uh, draw all of these 100 points to the screen at the same time using STL render, and then we're gonna say draw points. Uh, make sure you include the point. There's a function called point. Don't confuse it with the points. Okay, so the first argument is gonna take is obviously a render. Second argument is gonna take is uh, the points. It's, it, it's gonna ask for an array of points. It's not gonna ask for a vector of points. So because of that, you need to get the underlying array from the vector. Uh, you get the underlying array by doing v.data. And then since arrays do not contain um, any other information about them, you need to pass in v.size so that it knows how many points there are uh, inside of this array. Okay, save that. Now let's compile this. To compile this, you are going to need to uh, use C++, I believe uh, C++ 11 or higher. So we're gonna do std is equal to C++ 20, uh, link, link stl2. Uh, and then we're just gonna say draw.cpp, that's the file I'm using, and then I'm gonna output this as draw. And we're gonna execute this. Mm, okay, let's see. What did I not include? Vector, vector. Oops. Okay. Let's do that again. Okay. So what we get is we just get a whole bunch of points on our screen. Uh, and those are just the random points uh, that we generated uh, in this for loop up here. So this isn't the only thing you can do. Uh, you can also draw lines. So for example, if you wanted to, uh, lines, uh, they work pretty much the same way. You can just do SDL, render, draw lines, and then just pass in, uh, pass in a render, uh, v.data, then v.size, right. Okay, so as you can see, now we have a whole bunch of lines. They, they are all connected. So if you don't want connected lines, you would have to use a different function for that. Um, what else we can do is we can also do something similar with rectangles. So if you want, you can uh, define a whole bunch of uh, rectangles. So for example, you can do something like std vector sdl uh, rect, and then we're gonna say uh, RV stands for rect vector. Um, let's just uh, give this a brace so we can add a new line here. RV dot in place back, and then we are going to in place back uh, with a vector. We are going to in place back the position first, and then we're going to in place back. Uh, well, okay, so basically it's going to take rand. Uh, modulus 640 so the first argument is going to be the position the x y and then rand 480 uh, then we are just gonna we're gonna make the size standard so they don't look too crazy so we have a random position for this uh, for this uh, for this rect and then we have the size 10 so it's going to be a whole bunch of uh, size 10 rects and what we can do here is we can say we can say sdl render uh, draw rects render not v rv dot data and then we can say rv dot size right let's compile this again Okay, so as you can see, we have a whole bunch of rects here. We have a bunch of lines. We have a bunch of points. Uh, if you want to, you can go crazy and you can also include SDL render fill rects data rb dot size. Okay, let's compile that. 
and as you can see your recs are filled down so uh this is pretty much all of the basic drawing operations you could do in sdl i there are a lot more that i didn't cover uh if but they're all pretty much the same thing as i showed here uh you can go and look at the wi uh, wiki page for the documentation i strongly recommend looking at the wiki uh, because there are a lot of functions that are not really talked about in tutorials that are on or that are on the wiki that could be pretty useful. So, for example, one of them was uh, STL intersection. Uh, th that is that is like one of the functions that I didn't see in any tutorial when I was like learning about STL. Again, highly recommend looking at the wiki. Uh, in the next session, I'll probably be uh, playing around with the event system, and uh, yeah, I'll see you then.